Type blood or B type blood for some reason in California was was detrimental and so they, they died. That's not reasonable. There's no evidence for that whatsoever. But there is solid evidence that the frequencies of alleles in various populations can just change randomly over time, just just by by accident. It's a sort of accidental or random uh, evolution, and it's a very very uh, potent mode. Random genetic drift. It's called. Some of us actually think it's the predominant. Uh, form of, uh, of evolution, but the problem, the question, the the point is that the definition can't commit to a mechanism. It's got to be open to the possibility that tomorrow somebody's going to publish a paper showing another mechanism of evolution. Maybe meiotic drive is finally going to be accepted by 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 everybody. Uh, punctuated equilibrium, or uh, uh, species sorting, or group selection, or all kinds of other possibilities. The definition doesn't commit to the, to, to the mechanism, and that's, a, that's very important to understand uh, that. <clears throat> so that leads us to the, the discussion of evolution as a fact and a theory. Uh, Stephen Jay Gould was a, uh, one of the, the first persons to write a, a, an essay called Evolution as a Fact and a Theory. Evolution as a Fact and as, as a Theory. He published it in Discover magazine in May of 1981. That was about the time he was appearing uh, in the Arkansas trial, which was uh, uh, the, the, the trial of the century in 1981, <coughs> or the trial of the, of the millennium or whatever in 1981. There was another trial of the millennium in uh, 1988, and there was another one in 1991, and then there was one two years ago in 2005, and there probably be one a couple of years from now. Um, <coughs> this isn't going to go away. Uh, so, but he appeared in uh, at the in the Arkansas trial. He wrote this uh, essay at about that time to help explain to people what evolution is all about. <clears throat> so, I'm going to read to you uh, uh, what he said because he said it as well as anybody. I stole, uh, by the way, I stole the title uh, of this talk uh, uh, from him, but he's uh, <clears throat> he's passed away in 2002, so he doesn't know. Um, <clears throat> And there are, if you search the web, um, if you look on my blog, for instance, I put up today a list of, uh, of essays on evolution as a fact and theory. There's five or six of them that are all, that are all quite good. But they, they pretty much say the same things. The ones that say things that are different are just wrong. <coughs> so Gould says, um, <coughs> there's lots of debate and discussion you can have. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to give you the simplest, straight, most straightforward facts. And I'll, I hope I remember to tell you from time to time that there are people uh, who, who dispute them. But, so what Gould says is that in the American vernacular, theory often means an imperfect fact, part of a, a hierarchy of confidence r running downhill from fact to theory to hypothesis to, to, to just simple guess. Thus the power of the creationist argument when they say evolution is only a theory, and the intense, the intense debate now rages about many aspects of the theory. Of course, the creationists say that evolution is only a theory. You know, well, we've just seen that that we can define evolution in a certain way. And I've given you examples. I've given you tons of examples that fit the definition, match the definition, are testable. So, it, so it's also a fact. So, if evolution, according to Gould, if evolution is uh, worse than a fact, and scientists can't even make up their minds about the theory, then what confidence can we have in it? That's what the, that's what the creationists uh, say. So then he goes on, he says, this is the quote that's on the slide here, while well, evolution is a theory, it is also a fact. And facts and theories are different things, not rungs in the hierarchy of increasing theory. Facts are the world's data. Theories are structures of ideas that explain and interpret facts. <coughs> Let me just pause for a minute and explain that. So. It's not really correct to talk about the, the theory of evolution. It's much better to use a uh, different phrase, call it evolutionary theory, because there are lots of different <coughs> theories and ideas floating out about how, how evolution happened. So Gould continues that facts do not go away when scientists debate rival theories to explain them. For instance, Einstein's, Einstein's theory of gravitation replaced Newton's but apples did not suspend themselves in midair while that debate was going on. <clears throat> so, humans evolved from ape-like ancestors, whether they did so by Darwin's proposed mechanism or by some other mechanism yet to be decided. That's a really strong statement, and one which we need to advertise more. The fact that humans and chimps share a common ancestor 
is not theoretical, it's a fact. We have so much evidence for that <clears throat> that it would be stupid not to accept that as a, as a scientific fact. It's not part of the theory of evolution. The theory, or evolutionary theory, is a, is a, is a, uh, a collection of uh, ideas and concepts, and uh, some are more proven than others, that explain how two lineages diverged from a, a, a common ancestor to produce um, uh, what we now see as uh, chimps and humans. So he says that um, fact, so we need to get straight what a fact is. A fact can only mean something that's confirmed to such a degree that it would be perverse to withhold provisional assent or consent. So think about what that means. Okay? <clears throat> when we say that something is a fact, <laughs> we mean we have so much evidence in favor of it that it would really be silly to, 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 to say, well, it's still speculative. Scientists will always keep in the back of their mind the possibility that a fact today might become a non-fact tomorrow. But, for the, for, but that happens so rarely that, that, that at some point we make commitments and say, look, you know, the Earth really does go around the sun. But if you're being really honest, and there's philosophers in the audience who will agree with me, you'll have to admit that for, out of some perverse way, we may be mistaken about that at some point in the future. There's always this potential that, <clears throat> that something could, could not be a, a fact, but at some point you have to make a, you have to make a commitment. <clears throat> so Gould says, the evolutionists have always been very clear about this distinction between fact and theory from the very beginning, if only because they've always acknowledged how far we are from completely understanding the mechanism, theory, by which evolution, fact, occurs. That's the distinction that we're talking about. <coughs> Charles Darwin himself continually emphasized the differences between his two major uh, accomplishments. It's well known that, that, that Darwin's <laughs> publication of Origin of Species did two things. It's actually, if you parse it, there's actually seven things, but there's two main things. Okay, First of all, he established, by, by presenting evidence and presenting information, he established that species have evolved. He set out to destroy the concept that species were immutable and fixed, and the Bible was, was right. He set out to, to destroy that concept by collecting data, showing, talking about the fossil evidence, and talking about breeding pigeons and whatnot, establishing that evolution happens. That's one thing he did. The second thing he did was he put forth a theory of how it happens, Darwin's theory of natural selection which we now recognize to be true. It's been proven and demonstrated time and time and time again. It's, it's, it's a fact, really. It's not really, it's a, it's not really a theory. It's, <clears throat> it's theory when you apply it to, say, the evolution of whales. We can't actually test uh, whether natural selection is the, is, is the cause of that. Uh, <clears throat> um, but in lots of other certain, the, the, the evolution of drug-resistant bacteria, for example, is an example of natural selection. So Darwin's proposal was natural selection demonstration of fact, that the fact of evolution, and the theory is a, is a theory about the, the mechanism. Okay, it's moving quite a long, <coughs> long, uh, it, it, Gould didn't invent this. It's been around for a long time. Here's Theodosius Dobzhansky. Dobzhansky is a very famous evolutionary biologist, uh, worked on uh, fruit flies and is responsible for the early population genetics, the discovery of, uh, 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 <coughs> of, um, uh, uh, evolution on the on the sort of micro scale. He's one of the scientists that contribute to the to the great uh, modern synthesis of evolutionary theory, which happened in the 1940s. So a whole bunch of people got together in the 1940s, all the leading evolutionary biologists, about a dozen of them, at a conference and try and worked out. Okay, this is what evolutionary theory is. This is what it isn't. Okay, they had certain um, <clears throat> contenders that they wanted to uh, eliminate. So they came up, they defined evolution much the way uh, I've just been defining it. And that's that, that event, and that's sort of the modern synthesis of evolutionary theory. What it really was, was the combination of genetics with field biology and paleontology. So it's really bringing genetics into the discussion of evolution, which, of course, Darwin knew nothing about genetics. So anyway, so Dodensky is just saying, you know, let me make crystal clear what's beyond 
established beyond the reasonable doubt what needs further study about evolution. Evolution is the process that's always gone on in the history of the earth can be doubted only by those who are ignorant of the evidence or are resistant to the evidence owing to emotional blocks or plain bigotry. By contrast, the mechanisms that bring evolution about certainly need study and clarification. There are no alternatives to evolution as history that can withstand critical examination, yet we're constantly learning new and important facts about evolutionary mechanism. What he means is that when you have historical examples of evolution, the uh, whales, horses, humans, whatever, there's no, there's no other explanation. There's nobody has come, come up with something that explains those kinds of lineages and that kind of data. Trust me, nobody has. You never read uh, uh, a creationist book saying, here's how whales evolved, or here's how whales changed from carnivores. Okay? That's not going to happen. Right? So nobody has any other explanation. That's the fact of evolution. Okay? But as far as evolutionary theory, there are lots of new things happening, lots of new <coughs> ways of going on, different ways of explaining how these things can happen at various different levels, at levels of speciation, levels of changes at the level of the, of the gene. So this quotation is from the famous uh, paper, Nothing in Biology Makes Sense Except in the Light of Evolution. It was published in a journal for American biology teachers back in 1973. We often, now Gould alert, uh, um, referred to uh, apples falling and, and, and not falling. So the, the, the distinction between fact and theory in biological sciences and in evolution and gravity is a, is a good analogy. And so that we know that gravity exists. Okay, and it's defined in such a way with apologies to any physicists in the audience, it's, it's the attraction between two masses. Okay, <clears throat> I realize it probably a more sophisticated definition, but I didn't bother to look it up. But, but we can understand, you know, basically we can, we can accept that that's sort of what gravity is all about. We have a, a big mass underneath us that's attracting us, uh, and that's, that's why we can't fly. Okay? <clears throat> I have a little trouble, I'm not a physicist, a little trouble understanding the part where I'm attracting the Earth. Um, <clears throat> but apparently it's true, I, I don't really seem to be able to attract anything. I can't attract hair, for example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but apparently that's the, that's the correct definition. But there's also a theory of gravity. Okay? So the theory of gravity is about space-time distortions and relativity and that sort of thing. It explains how gravity actually happens. So apparently I'm distorting space-time and so is the Earth and we're sort of falling into a, a collective pit and that's how gravity happens. Again, I'm not an expert, but the point is that there's a distinction between gravity as the fact and the definition and the mechanisms that, that explain it. And those theories can change over time, but apples don't suspend in midair while those things are happening. So that's the kind of analogy that, 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 that we're talking about. We'll see an example of, <clears throat> of how we can use that analogy. Just uh, Other people say the same thing. This is uh, Dick Lewinton, Richard Lewinton. Uh, basically saying the same kind of thing, distinction between facts and theories. Here's an example of facts. So this is the horse evolution, which had been worked out, uh, beginning with Gaylord Simpson uh, back in the 30s and 40s, and he was another one of these people who was at this, this, this giant meeting in the 40s, not giant, but important meeting in the 40s that formed that he was the paleontologist uh, representative, the macroevolution guy. So we have a, a pretty thorough history of the evolution of horses beginning way down here with Eohippus some 50 million years ago. Trace it out. There's no questions about this. This is, this is not theory. This is fact. Here's all the fossils. Here's how they line up. And we have l lots of uh, morphological de details to look at. When we get up um, uh, into, the, into the present day, we can look at the various races and species of, um, of horses and, and zebras and and whatnot, and do genetic tests to show that they're related, and show which genes they have and which genes they don't have. This is not really something that's in dispute. Creationists, of course, would, would say, oh, this, this is just theory, right? No, it's not. It's not theory, it's fact. Okay? Theory is, how did it happen? What happened in here? Why did these species split? And is this natural selection? Is it random genetic drift? Or was there something else going on? That's what evolutionary theory is all about.
Let me turn to Doug, uh, to, to, to Doug Schuma, who I referred to before, the author of the, uh, of the textbook, just to sum up things. And in contrast, the statement that organisms have evolved, descended with modification from common ancestors, the historical reality of evolution is not a theory, and that's what I just said. You think of that as being the history of life. All right, so part of evolution is working out the history of life. And these are one-off events. These are unique events, right? It's sort of like, to continue with our gravity analogy, there's gravity, the fact, we attract each other, or not. And there's gravity, there's a theory, there's relativity, there's the distortion of space-time continuum. Then there's things like, how did our solar system form? Okay, gravity clearly played a role in that, but that's a unique event, right? So we, we're, we're talking about his, history here. How did one particular thing happen? How did horses evolve? Okay, that, that's, that's working out the history of life. So it's important to keep in mind the distinction between working out the actual history of life on Earth, uh, theoretical concepts in evolution, definitions of evolution, which refer to uh, changes in the frequencies of genes at the level of, uh, of populations. Okay, and this is essentially what, uh, <clears throat> like heliocentric solar system evolution began as hypothesis and achieved facthood as the evidence in the favor became so strong that no knowledgeable and unbiased person could deny its reality. Now remember earlier, Dobzhansky said that if you, don't, if you don't accept the facts of evolution, then you're, I forget what he was, either stupid or bigoted or something, what the choices were. And both he and, and Douglas Fatuma are being a little bit too kind here. Uh, and uh, Fuchima knows it, okay, because he's written a book about <laughs> creationism and evolution. There is a third possibility, okay, so the people who deny the obvious facts of evolution can be stupid, they can be blinded by bigotry, or they could be lying. Yeah. And as it turns out, lying is much more common than most people realize. It, it, there just have to be creationists out there who know everything I'm telling you, but lie about what definitions are, we're about to see one, okay. So no biologist today would think of submitting a paper entitled New Evidence for Evolution because it just hasn't been uh, an issue for more than a century. <clears throat> so this is what the creationists say, evolution is just a theory. And you can see, I think you can understand why they want the general public to believe this. Okay? They, they <clears throat> it, because for one thing, Theory amongst the general public means something very different than what it means to a scientist. It means just a wide-eyed speculation or a guess. Okay? I have a theory that, you know, if I put this stuff on my head, I'm going to grow hair or, you know, all kinds of garbage like that. Uh, I, I don't care about <laughs> get the wrong impression here. Uh, um, so most people, when you say theory, they automatically think this is speculation. Okay? So if the creations can create this impression that evolution whatever it is, is just a theory, then they've already taken a step towards defeating it as a rational explanation. And, and I'm, my goal here is to show you that, that they're wrong, and you, so you can challenge them on them. No, there is something called evolutionary theory, but it's not what you think it is. There's also the facts about the history of life. There's also a definition of evolution, which has been uh, 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 so proving that evolution has been demonstrated many times. There are aspects of theoretical biology or theoret evolutionary theory like natural selection which have been proven. They're not abstract in, in any sense uh, whatsoever. Okay. Now here's another example of uh, the basic facts of evolution. In this case, we're going to mix a uh, little bit uh, facts and speculation. So these are these little tubes here represent the fossil record of, um, of species that are related to us, beginning back here about six million years ago with a species that, uh, <coughs> that is very similar to the ancestor of chimpanzees. The chimpanzees uh, then branched off uh, to give uh, rise to, to chimps and bonobos, and, and uh, this lineage eventually gave rise to, here's us up here, modern humans, ta-da! <coughs> So the tubes represent where the fossils are found in the, in the fossil record, the time frame of the various fossils. And so <clears throat> there weren't any of us uh, a million years ago. Fact. Okay. Now, of course, 
if you're a young Earth creationist, there wasn't even a million years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> so the whole, you know, they, they can't relate to this diagram in, in any way, shape, or form. What's still speculation or, or hypothesis are the yellow lines joining these groups. So what the lineages actually are is hotly disputed, uh, and this is just one uh, possibility. There are others who would, who would move these things around and say that there are different uh, uh, ancestral relationships uh, between them, although it's settling down quite a bit. So this is, this is actually getting to be pretty close. There's a whole branch here that went extinct, uh, and uh, now we think that Australopithecus africanus is a lineage that went uh, uh, extinct after the other version of Australis, uh, Australopithecus. This is Australopithecus africanus. This is uh, Australopithecus sensus, af afarensis, uh, which is probably what gave rise to homo. So that's still debatable. Okay? You get a bunch of anthropologists, uh, paleontologists who specialize in human evolution in a room, and you can be sure that they're <coughs> going to find something to disagree on. <coughs> And of course, that's what makes the headlines, right? They'll agree on 99.99% of everything, but we're all, we're really good. You put me in a room with another molecular biologist, a molecular evolutionist, and within a few minutes, we're going to find the things that we disagree on and start yelling at each other. Right? That's, that's what scientists do. And we don't care about the things we agree on. We only care about the things we disagree on. Of course, if you're a creationist listening to that, you get the, totally the wrong impression about uh, what, the science is, what the science is all about. So here's a poll. Here's what the average American thinks in, in, in 2005. They're asked various questions. Here's the right answer in blue. Humans evolved from <laughs> non-human uh, ancestors. So 12% of Americans believe this fact. This is a fact. Okay? This is not theoretical. This is not hypothetical. The evidence that humans and chimpanzees share a common ancestor is just not open to, to to, to debate or discussion, really. It's really solid evidence. Only 12% of Americans will actually believe the facts of science. You know, even I imagine most of you looking at this will you know, start to sort of make excuses. Well, you know, there's sort of God, God, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's not quite as clear. Maybe I'm exaggerating. So, so my friend John Lynch, uh, what he did was he uh, recreated this poll as though the question was asking about gravity. Okay, so 12% believe that objects fall by gravity, okay, and 31% sort of God helps to pull them down, and 53% uh, God, but you know, so it looks silly when you do it this way, right? We all recognize how silly that sort of response is, but we don't recognize it quite as easily when it's, when we're dealing with evolution, unfortunately, and, and we should. Okay. okay, here's, this guy is Jonathan Wells. And now, get your pens ready, the test is coming up. Okay? So this is Jonathan Wells. Jonathan Wells is a Mooney. And uh, Reverend Sun Moon financed his uh, education. He has a PhD in molecular biology from Berkeley. Pretty, Berkeley's like the top place in the world uh, for biochemistry and molecular biology. <coughs> That's pretty impressive. And he did his work in a fairly good lab. So there's no, there's no question about his uh, abilities uh, to handle that kind of work. And so, you know, quite a legitimate PhD. But, but the Reverend Sun Moon financed his way to, uh, uh, through graduate school so that he would have the credentials to destroy evolution. And he's not, he's proud about it. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't make any bones about this. Is, you know, he's out to destroy Darwinism, and, uh, and now he's got the credentials to do it. So he publishes a book, uh, many books. One of them is called Icons of Evolution, in which he sets up Ten uh, um, great myths of evolution, all of which are just completely bogus and wrong. And so we just uh, we have a course at the University of Toronto, which tries to teach students to be rational. Um, and so we work through this book in, in the course, trying to how do you reason about this? How do you how do you uh, decide whether something is true or not? And this is here is one of the this is one of the this is the midterm exam from just last month. Okay, so icons of evolution. Jonathan Well defined Wells defines evolution. So he starts off with saying, biological evolution is the theory that all living things are modified descendants of common ancestors that lived in the distant past. I think we know now, right, that this, this, this isn't right. But he's, he's mixing up various things. He's mixing up the, the, the observation that things have uh, evolved from a common ancestor. That's fossil record, that's genetics, that's, a whole kind of, that's all kinds of uh, evidence that demonstrate that living things have, co have a common ancestor. 
and he's mixing that up with the definition of biological evolution okay, and throwing in theory for good measure. Okay. So this is no relationship at all to what any scientist would ever say. That's very clear. Now, I'm, I'm sure most of you recognize why he's putting it this way, right? Because his goal is to destroy evolution. His goal is to set seeds of doubt in the minds of all of his readers. And so he wants to use the word theory, knowing full well they're going to interpret that to mean speculation. <clears throat> is Jonathan Wells telling the truth? He can't be telling the truth. He's got a PhD from uh, Berkeley in molecular biology. He's heard all of this stuff before, right? He's He's written a few papers. He's, he's, he's demonstrated that he knows what this is all about. He's lying. He has to be deliberately misleading people. And, and unfortunately, this is, again, what we're up against. We're up against people who have no compunction about lying for, for, for a greater good. He knows full well that this is not any reasonable scientific definition uh, of evolution. Just by the way, I'm sort of beginning to close here. That, this is how the creationists uh, view us. Um, so we're on this side here. Here's evolution. Here's here's me, <coughs> uh, along with uh, lawlessness and homosexual behavior, pornography, <coughs> abortion. I like man's opinion. I don't see what's wrong with that. I've always my wife may not agree with me, but it looks like a pretty good thing. But uh, anyway, on the other side, it's God's word, uh, laws. Okay, you evolutionist, you can't have laws. Uh, you can't be married. You can't have standards, and there's no meaning to life. Uh, so that's all on the on the other side. So this is the this is the setup. This is what this is what the anti-evolutionists are thinking. It's really, you know, it, it's kind of funny. Um, uh, we can we can joke about it, but it's really how they they feel about it. That evolution is a great great threat to their whole uh, way of life, their whole outlook of life, which is all this part here. Okay? What's interesting is on the very same site, they have this slide which shows that the they're losing. Okay. Well, all the little evolutionary termites here are over, and the whole thing's coming crashing, uh, crashing down. That's sort of you know, somewhat gratifying. Um, <laughs> and, um, and we're going to be left with a world full of abortion, pornography, homosexual behavior, lawlessness, and man's opinion. I will skip that. So, in closing, then, do you all remember the definition of evolution? <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a process involving populations where there's a change in the heritable characteristics over many generations, right? Really simple. That's what it is. If you hear anyone trying to snow you with any kind of other other kind of definition, you know that they're either not telling the truth or they're misguided in, in some way. So there are lots of sites of places where you can go for information. One of the most famous is this Talk Origins Archive. It's a collection of all creationist arguments are answered by someone on this website. It's actually it's a collection. It originally began as a collection of messages on a, on a, on a news group, an uh, internet news group called Talk Origins, um, which is actually run the server, the worldwide server for it is in my office. Uh, and so what we did over time is we collected all the best messages and we put them on this archive so they'd be accessible via the web. And now the archive has kind of grown, has an independent life of uh, of its own, but this is the primary source of information in the creation evolution debate, and it's entirely voluntary. It's just run by people who are who are interested in the subject, and uh, the quality varies a little bit, but uh, it's pretty good. There's an essay, a couple of essays by me there uh, uh, that are um, uh, that readily demonstrate the differences in quality. Some are good, and some, <coughs> <coughs> and then the blogosphere is where the fight is really taking place. Uh, you see it in newspapers, and you see it in the courts and, and whatever, but it's really now amongst, it used to be on the news groups, and now it's on the blogs. Um, and of course, I can't list off, so I'm listing just mine. Mine is sandwalk.blogspot.com, and there are links there if you want to find uh, what's going on uh, in the, uh, the other uh, blog sites. This is the creation evolution debate, and this is where people discuss what is evolution, what's the latest stuff, what's going on, there's a lot of science, and there's a lot of uh, back and forth um, disputes between creationists and uh, evolutionists. And creationists will come to these sites, and of course we go to their sites until we're banned. Uh, one of the, just as an aside, one of the interesting aspects of this whole discussion is that the, all the evolution sites, 
and there are some really big ones. I have a friend in, in the University of Minnesota who runs a, a site called Pharyngi Pharyngula, which is, has 30,000 people a day visit, visit his site. So that's a really, really big site, completely open. It doesn't matter whether you're a creationist or whatever, you can go on there. All of the creationist sites have various restrictions, and most of us are banned from, from those sites. You go on, you say something they don't like, you're banned. Okay. So it's a really interesting phenomenon that, that the one side is open to discussion and debate, and the other side is completely not. Okay, I want to stop here. This is, uh, uh, this is far enough. We're getting kind of late. I want to leave a bit of time for any questions and discussions. This is supposed to be a cafe inquiry, inquiry uh, where we can talk about these things. So uh, let's begin now if we have any questions and discussions. There's a microphone set up on the left there. I think it's active, so if you can get people to line up so we have that on, on tape, that would be great. Okay, yes, there, I saw a hand up uh, just when I, when I stopped. Who's that? Oh, you, yes. Hi. Um, so, since we're trying to make the definition as minimal as possible, yes. um, is it possible to question?